We've got four solar panels up top, and for those of you that are curious, it's a 385 watt mission solar panels. And I've got all four of them piped in one at a time through some channeling back here into our new four channel microinverter. So this is 500 watts per channel, and we have a maximum of 2,000 watts to the M2000. We author also are going to be offering a two channel 1,000 watt model of that. Then over here, I've because it's a van, I have it hooked up for a generator, but this is a, a mock up of how it would be in your home with a meter, a 200 amp disconnect, and then of course, this is all live right here. I have a 15K, and from here, I've got the grid power coming in, and then the load is coming out to power my whole main service panel, just like you have it in your home. And in here, it's um, all the loads in the van. I've got a bunch right here that we can see, and you'll notice that we also have Savant controls in here. This allows us to uh, turn on any load um, that we want, turn on or off any load that we want inside the van. And we can actually show all this in a really slick looking app. So you can see how much power is being used in the van. Um, it, it talks from, the battery talks to the inverter and then the Savant can talk to the inverter as well. So it gets all the information that it needs. And I can go through here, jump into the, the loads. I can see how much power anything's using. So my refrigerator right now is using 61 watts, for example come in here and I can control any of the outlets on the side of the van. Super cool. Now the battery that we're using today, and we are battery agnostic, but the one that happens to be in the van is going to be this Endure back here. It's a 20 kilowatt hour battery bank. And we've got the battery cables going through this awesome channeling uh, terminator looking thing um, underneath the battery over there. And we have um, closed loop comms with this company and a lot of others as well. Um, so that pretty much does it for this wall, and I can go ahead and slide that in, pull out the other one for you. All right, so this is going to be a bunch of demo units and our network hardware. So first up, we've got our 30K unit. This is a three-phase uh, 208, 120, 208 native with high-voltage battery inputs and four MPPTs. This is going to come out in November of 2022, and then soon after that we're coming out with a 60K in the same form factor. It's going to be even higher voltage, so for the 30K the battery input is going to max out at 550, and for the 60K the battery is going to max out at 800 volts. Um, and then 500 volts for the PV for the 30K, and 1000 volts for the PV on the 60K. So super excited there, going to be great for industrial applications. 30K and 60K you can stack up to 12 of them. So you can get pretty big. I think the limit for the 60K is going to be 930 kilowatts of PV, directly hooked up to 12 of them. Then we have uh, kind of our bread and butter unit. This is a 12K. You guys probably already know about those. But, uh, you know, hybrid inverter, 48 volts on the battery. Probably seen those before. And then over here we have our new 5K single phase unit. And 48 volt battery. These are going to be 120 uh, only for a 5K configuration or you can program it to 240 single phase and um, get 8K out of it. And then up here we've got our Savant control systems. So this box here um, talks to the inverter, this here talks to Savant's uh, back end, and this right here communicates wirelessly to the, uh, the relays inside the main service panel. That's pretty much the map other than the refrigerator and the microwave. Thank you, uh, David Parker from Solark, uh, joining us today uh, from Ecodirect headquarters in Carlsbad. I'm Renee Donaldson, our CEO, and today uh, we got to check out the van by Solark, which is completely outfitted with a variety of Solark inverters uh, in various sizes. They have the Savant energy system, and we have just been having a great afternoon checking it out. Yeah, thanks, Renee. What would you think of the show? I thought it was very well attended. The last number I heard was 27,000. That sounds about right. I mean, it was awesome. It was just uh, it was great to see all the, our vendors, manufacturers out there uh, supporting the solar and storage uh, uh, industry. And I think uh, it's really going to be a game-changing 2023. And just uh, can't wait. Uh, Solark, too, you have so many new products coming out. I noticed you were just uh, really busy at your booth. Everyone wanted to hear and learn uh, what you guys were doing. Yeah, thank you. We, uh, we do have a number of products coming out. We're going to launch seven new products in the next six months. We've got uh, micro inverters coming in a two-channel format and a four-channel format. We've got commercial inverters coming that are native three-phase. 
We've got a 30 kilowatt coming that's 208 volt. We have a 60 kilowatt inverter coming for the 480 volt market. Uh, these share the same lineage that the other inverters from Solark have. We have a five millisecond transfer time that is UPS grade, wicked fast. Uh, we can stack the units to scale the size of them. So we really are going to be able to open up the commercial market with, say, pharmacies, banks, convenience stores, anybody that has a need for a hybrid system with energy storage. Uh, we'll be able to serve the commercial market that way, as well as the larger buildings. Let's just take a grocery store, for example. Mm -hmm. They have high value inventory in their meat and their fish. Well, if they lose the grid, they do one of two things. They either call the food bank or they have an immediate meat and fish sale. Or, and if that doesn't last for very long, then they're going to have to throw this away, right? Mm -hmm. There's FDA rules about temperature and, you know, meat, foodborne illnesses and these kinds of things. So grocery stores are a great example, but to be able to have that kind of power has been elusive. So with our new 60 kilowatt inverter, you can stack up to 12 of them. You could DC couple 930 kilowatts to those 12 inverters, and you could connect up to 9,900 amp hours of batteries to that system. Those inverters would act like a single inverter, and you'd have nearly a megawatt, uh, let's say, on the roof, and you could take the grocery store offline. Uh, it's a huge grocery store, probably one in Texas. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's exciting for us to move into that commercial space and be able to offer the kinds of functionality, speed, efficiency, power that we are known for. Uh, to those newer markets. It's going to be really exciting. We're also coming out with a bi-directional EV charger. We know that the EV market's going to just blow up <clears throat> here in America and the rest of the world, near as we can tell. So uh, we're coming out with a bi-directional EV charger, as well as our own optimizers with rapid shutdown and panel level monitoring. So uh, we've been busy during the, <laughs> during the pandemic, and uh, we're really looking forward to bringing our, our solutions to market. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot. I think that's probably uh, one of the largest uh, new market, new products coming to market from a manufacturer that I've seen, uh, even at the whole show, which is impressive. Yeah, we, we didn't mean to kind of do it this way, but it sort of happened. So we're just going to come out with a volley, like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> just started. We're going to make it rain with new products. Um, yeah. So, but it's going to be fun. All of the, everything I mentioned is going to come out basically in the next six to nine months. Uh, everything that we talked about. We'll have seven new products out by the end of Q2 of 2023. That is exciting. Uh, a couple of questions on the storage side. I'm sure a lot of people would like to know, are you looking at any particular partners for a high voltage uh, battery system for the commercial inverters? That's a great question. Uh, and yes, we are. So the high voltage on the battery side is important in those commercial applications because of the copper and conductor and so forth. So there's a lot of advantages to high voltage. So we do have... Um, BYD, PowerSync, Fortress, Endure, HomeGrid, uh, Adaptify. Am I leaving anybody out? I think there's about seven. And if, if I forgot you, I apologize. There's about seven battery partners that have got early versions of the specs and are working on the high voltage BMS. We will, you know, we'll get their batteries and look at the BMS. We'll send them an inverter, either a 60k or 30k, and we'll establish full communications with those battery partners. We're really trying to, you know, we're the Swiss Army knife of, of inverters, and we are agnostic to the other gear, solar panels, generators, batteries. So we want to bring that same ideology and business model to the high-voltage commercial space, to where we have a number of battery parts. I would think that other inverter companies would look at it and go, yeah, well, that's a good idea. And so then maybe they come into the space, and then there's more battery companies. Eventually, we can get the high-voltage uh, business model going in the commercial side. It's been tried before, but I, my personal opinion why it hasn't gone anywhere in, in, in mass is because the people that have tried it have had a closed-ended proprietary model. Here's my inverter with my battery, with my gear and my web box and my this and my that. It all works together, but it doesn't talk to anything. So it never got any momentum. It never had any inertia in the marketplace. So we're hoping by bringing the uh, agnostic inverter that's powerful, fast, and efficient to the market with a number of battery partners around it that we can kind of get a groundswell going in that market space and get some, get some momentum uh, as an industry for those guys. Absolutely. I mean, you have to diversify uh, with the supply chain uh, issues that we've been seeing anyways. Yes. So by having a lot of compatible battery storage partners, you're just going to be able to really fulfill those needs faster and easier for yeah. a variety of uh, customers.
Are you going to be on the CEC list uh, for those commercial inverters, do you think, by the 2023 as well? Yes. Um, so the first thing we do is we run through the UL series, right, the UL gauntlet. Mm -hmm. uh, we get all the UL certifications. Then we immediately turn our attention to California, CEC list, SGIP, California Rule 21, CEC PCS. So we'll go through them. Uh, we are, you know, we sell into Canada, Central America, South America, the Caribbean, and the United States. So after we're done with California, which comes as number two, uh, we'll do NOM for Mexico, we'll do PREPA for Puerto Rico, we'll do HECO for Hawaii. Uh, we'll, they'll go through all of those sequences. It's, all of our inverters are highly certified <laughs> for the various markets uh, that we serve. Yes. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. You know, it's uh, more than ever with a big push for EV vehicles that we've been seeing not only at the show, uh, but even at the fully charged, conf uh, fully charged conference that was in San Diego for the first time in the U.S. Uh, we're going to need to have additional production uh, to be able to support all the additional consumption that people are going to have. So it's going to be a, a banner year. Um, on that note, uh, for the same, a similar question uh, for the bi-directional EV chargers, is that going to be manufacturer specific or is it more agnostic like the battery storage side is? Uh, I believe it will be agnostic. And so, you know, one of the models that we really value is being able to, you know, quote, play nice with the other kids on the playground. So we don't have a closed proprietary model. We're the exact opposite. We like to play with everything. Uh, so in the solar panel space, we can use any panel. You watch your voltage open circuit, you know, hitting our NPPT controllers. Just a very basic electrical consideration. But the, any panel. Um, on the battery side, for the home inverters, not the big commercial inverters, anything 48 volt. So we don't care about brand type or chemistry. We have a lot of battery partners. We love Fortress, we love Endure, we love HomeGrid. We got great battery partners with full communications, et cetera. And we'll continue that in the larger space. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we value the fact that we are agnostic to the other gear and we'll be able to play nice with other pieces of equipment. And we'll certainly keep that up as we move into the EV charging space. We're happy about that because ours is bi-directional. So these concepts of V to G, V to H, which is vehicle to grid, vehicle to home, vehicle to wherever you want the electrons to go. Yep. Um, so we want to enable that movement. And, you know, the, the vehicle you park in your house could be used to power the house. I mean, why not, right? It's electrons in the vehicle. Um, if you have a bi-directional capability, you can get those electrons out of the vehicle into the home. Uh, so we, you know, we want to put the homeowners in control of their energy. Yeah, and, and they want to be in control, too. We're finding so many people that are very well educated and contacting us uh, looking for a specific solar and storage system for their home and to fit their needs. And it's nice that they can really do a, more of a holistic energy uh, solution. Uh, I'm curious if that affects the warranty for the vehicles. It'll probably have to be to, to, to be determined. I, yeah. I was curious on that, uh, though. It's have you heard a, anything? I have not. It's a really good question. I would hope that they would incorporate that ideology into the warranty from the from the get go. Because if they have, if the homeowners have the capability, the, the electronics are coming out to enable that capability to where you can take the electrons out of your vehicle and put it into another battery, send it to the grid, or perhaps power your loads with it. So uh, to your question, I'm just hopeful that the automakers have kind of considered that use case in their warranties, but. The number of vehicle manufacturers coming with EVs is like everybody. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, you know, Audi, Porsche, GM, Ford, Toyota, Honda. I mean, it's just everybody. So I'm hoping they're considering that. There is a massive wave of EVs coming to the world. And so uh, we want to be part of that. And we want to tie that into the rest of the system. And what you said a moment ago really resonated. The, we are finding the homeowners are very much more educated about their energy. They want to know more about the energy. How does it get used? Where does it get used? How do I control it? You know, there's this great uh, awareness awakening going on, and there's a lot of curiosity. And I think the EVs are really helping it mm -hmm. because they understand, wow, that's a giant battery on wheels. So, you know, can I get the electrons into the back car? Can I get them out of the car? What can I do with them? So we're, we're very uh, encouraged by the uh, awareness and education level that we see in the consumers these days. Yeah, it's very exciting. So, like, we're back in the wild west with solar uh, once again. So, I feel like we saw this a lot in, like, you know, 20, 2011, 2013, and now back 10 years later, you know, we have that same uh, real excitement for all the new uh, ways that you can use energy and uh, really to your advantage. 
Um, so what would you suggest uh, for your suite of products, which you have now several with the micro inverters, the standard string, in, uh, string inverter or hybrid inverters, as you should say, mm -hmm. um, and the smart panel that's coming out. If a brand new system, what do you think uh, is going to be available? Uh, you know, assuming that it's Q2 for a customer, are they, would you suggest that they get the smart panel at the same time and go with a solar, get the EV charger, as well as a hybrid inverter? Kind of, if they need the trifecta, like get it all at one time, does it make a difference? Um, it might, and where I say that it might is on the incentive side, right? So if you have the ITC, you can only take so many bites of the Apple so um, it may uh, behoove you to get an incentive and roll several things together and do them together. Say, I want batteries, I want solar, I want EV charger, you know, I want an inverter, do it all at the same time with load management, et cetera. Um, but you don't have to. I mean, for us, you can set up the PV now, you might add batteries a year from now, you might add them two years from now, uh, you might add an EV charger. So it is very possible to add these things one at a time later in whatever timing sequence a homeowner might want. But going back to your question, I think if they did get everything at once and they can fit it under the ITC, there's a 30% tax credit, maybe 10% on that. So uh, there might be a financial incentive to bundle it, uh, provided that you know it's within anybody's means to do so. So we certainly want to enable either one. Um, and there's nothing wrong with putting in the inverter now with some solar and then adding to it as you go. Okay. So it's mainly a financial incentive. Though. It's really not for like electrically or... Uh, any connectivity issues that we might see or just have to rewire it. It's more on the financial incentive. Sure. Incentive. Yeah, that's correct. I've had some friends of mine that have recently put in solar with batteries and a solar. Our smart load panel is coming out next year, and they just left room next to the main panel. And so to wire that smart load panel into the system, say, in April of next year, they don't have to take any steps backwards. They don't have to undo the PV or the batteries or anything. They can add the smart load, wire it in, and it can start to perform its function. They didn't really have to do anything retro-wise. So we do, uh, you know, we enable them to build the system piece by piece at their leisure, uh, if they so choose. But I, again, I think there's money if they bundle it, but I'll let them uh, figure that out with the IRS. Yeah, well, I mean, they, the good news is that they can buy it now, this year, if they want to take advantage of the tax credit, yes. and then just uh, get the smart panel next year. We just have to make sure that they plan accordingly and leave some additional space on the wall. So that's yes. easy. That seems easy enough, uh, sure. you know, and uh, with Solark, of course, it always is uh, very easy, very streamlined. There you have your two or three MPPT inputs and everything is very well stated. So uh, I'm really excited about the commercial system. Uh, can't wait. Uh, no doubt it'll be as successful as the residential side. And, uh, you know, again, just uh, really appreciate you uh, coming out here. Love to the show. And, uh, you know, we'll have to have we come back out again soon. Yeah, thank you very much. We appreciate you having us. You're very welcome. Thanks, David.